Rev up your engine! Here's a luxury sports car. It's a 2020 Lexus 500H, the hybrid version. And yes, it is a luxury sports car. And yes, it does look like a rocket ship preparing to take off. It's got lines. It's got fancy wheels. It's got insane little swooshy tail lights, dual exhaust, giant chrome parts. It looks like a rocket ship, but this one is rocket science. It has rocket science technology in it, especially the transmission. Or I should say transmissions. Now as everybody's going away from V8s to V6s, the original ones of these had V8 engines. And this one, as we look under the hood, it doesn't. It's got a V6 engine. Take that off. There's the V6 engine. You can see it has a lot of stuff on it. But the most interesting thing is down inside the transmission. Or I should say transmissions. It has a four-speed automatic transmission that's also connected to a CVT transmission because they didn't want that rubber band feeling a CVT. So it combines both a four-speed automatic with a CVT. And as you can see by these orange lines, high electricity, it also has two electric motors to make it go down the road. Now the electric motor and a gasoline V6 motor combined for 354 horsepower. Now still, that's less than the V8 version that puts out 471 horsepower. But as I said, this is a luxury sports car. This is not a race car. This baby wasn't made just for speed. As I showed you with the electric wires, it's also a hybrid vehicle. But it's not a conventional hybrid vehicle. The conventional hybrid vehicles, they get better gas mileage in town than they do on the highway because they regenerate electricity. But this is not the case in this. This is rated at 27 in the city and 35 on the highway. But I do have to say from my own experience of driving on the highway, that highway figure is kind of inflated. It's a heavy vehicle. I drove it on the highway and I got like 26 and a half miles a gallon on the highway. They're kind of inflating that. And I drove very conservatively. I went to speed limit with 65. I went 65, 70. Once 55, I went 55, 60. So I wasn't racing it around. But in town, I did get 27 miles a gallon. It's rated quite a bit higher on the highway than in the city, because the hybrid here is mainly for acceleration and speed. It's not for gas mileage. Now being a fancy hybrid, it does have a button for electric power. You push that, it goes for electric power, but. Don't expect to go very far on electric power. I put it on electric power and had the AC on full blast because it's hot here in Houston and it was 97 yesterday. So I had the AC on full blast. I put it on electric power just to see how far it go and it went about five, 600 feet then to turn the motor back on. <laughs> This is by no means a plug-in hybrid. The electric battery in it isn't all that big. It's for boosting. It's not for getting phenomenal gas mileage. It's to give it more power with the technology that it has using a V6 engine. And as I said, this is a luxury sports car. It's not a race car. I gotta say, something very strange happened to me to show me what kind of a luxury sports car it really is. And that's my wife. Hates riding in sports cars. Whenever I get them, she looks at them and says, it's beautiful, but I hate riding in those. We took a trip to the beach a few weeks ago in a new Toyota Supra that, of course, is really a BMW. Her back got sore on the trip. It's an hour drive on the highway. She said, don't ever put me in another one of these sports cars and take me to the beach. They're too uncomfortable. But since she drives this Lexus all the time, I thought maybe I can tempt her with this Lexus sports car. So she saw it, loved the way it looked, sat in it, and said, well, this seems a lot more comfortable to begin with, but it better ride well going to the beach. Now, being a mechanic for the last 52 years, I get to drive every car that's out there. So my wife has been in any kind of sports car you can imagine, and she hated them all after she rode in them for a while. Not this thing. <laughs> <laughs> she was comfy as can be. She didn't get a sore back like she did in a Supra from bouncing around. She said that is the only sports car that I would ever own. But this particular sports car, I do have to say, don't get mad at me people, but it's just my experience. Every single customer that I've had that's ever bought one of these things was a woman who had a lot of money. Or her husband had a lot of money. Every single one of them. You see, my wife's only five foot one. And she fit quite well in the car. The seat contoured her. She felt really comfy. These cars are especially for people of smaller stature. Because you see, 
Here we go. I'm gonna move the seat up here. Look back here. This is the driver's seat. I moved it back as far as it could go. It's hitting against the back seat. Really? It should have been called the two-seater because when you look in the back seat, there isn't much room. You could put a baby seat and run it backwards, sure. But for actual people, unless they had razor-thin legs, and they're not gonna be sitting behind me in this thing. These are very limited production cars. From what I've researched in the United States here, the most they ever sold was about 1,900 of them in one year. They've got a very limited market but man they have honed down to their market like I said every one of my customers who bought one of these things was a woman this thing has a top speed of 168 miles an hour and even that is electronically limited it could go faster if you wanted to so it's no slouch car but of course men they want the absolute fastest thing they can get up to spending 100 grand so they're probably gonna opt out for the V8 engine as long as they still produce them not for your purists this is a classic sports car luxury though may be it's still rear wheel drive has the rear wheel drive characteristics that a lot of people are looking for but being a Lexus it rides like a dream for a short base sports car I've never been in one that rode smoother than this that's why my wife liked it <laughs> <laughs> Me, I was totally happy with the new Camry TRD and the Supra handling because they're more sports racing design for speeding and cornering. This is the corners like a dream too. <laughs> but it's not a car you take to the racetrack. It's not that kind of car. It's a luxury sports car. Check the inside out. Got the cool old handles. You got to push them to pop them out so they're flush. We get inside unbelievable leather combinations and colors cool hand holders here i guess if the rider's scared they can hold on real tight like they're on a roller coaster or something <laughs> and it does have one very interesting thing look at the steering wheel it is not round it's elliptical that it's a much better driving experience doesn't touch my finger touches my finger it's an elliptical steering wheel it's not perfectly round really good design bud Speaking of bad designs, I do have to say, the entertainment system has to be one of the worst designs I have ever seen in a modern car. I would like a touch screen. I kept trying to touch it, but that's not a touch screen here. That's just a regular car dash that's hidden inside. The touch screen is actually down here where you have to use it like a mouse. And let me tell you, it is rather funky to say the least to compare it to the Corolla hybrid that I drove a month ago when I got into Toyota hybrid it took me 30 seconds to sync my Samsung s10 and it started playing music on Spotify 30 seconds now I'm a mechanic but it took me almost 15 minutes to figure out how to sync this thing it's got too many buttons it's got tune here seat track here media radio menu back and then it's touch but it also you can push it like a mouse sometimes people take technology too far in this case it was beautifully designed car i mean the stereo works fantastic and once i hook my phone up any other time i get in the car it just starts playing automatically that's no problem the fact that it took me a mechanic 15 minutes to figure out how to operate this thing to get it to sync with my phone ah uh, you need to do something with that see they're going for style that this is a normal type dash with that hidden inside and that the mouse here is for activating it but nah I, I say nix on that design i mean you want a cup holder there it is you don't want to use it hey it's not ugly even the armrest hey you don't want it fine you do there it is and when you don't you put it back in it was a really well designed car except for that stupid stereo system but now let's just take it for a drive now as with any lexus it's very smooth and with this crazy four speed automatic combined to a cvt and electric drive it just shifts smooth sometimes it actually shifts sometimes it's on the cvt all run by computers and the computers seem to work quite well we'll see what happens when we try to take off now you can see turn the engine off it's on electric mode and we're gonna launch it you can see it gets up and goes it is not a slouch no hands on the wheel go straight these are well designed cars there's no arguing that they stop like a dream they corner like a dream and like I said for something with a short wheel bias like this they really ride smooth I mean they're not gonna ride like my wife's Lexus because that's a full-size luxury car but still they ride extremely smoothly it's not even like driving. <laughs> it's kind of like a major carpet ride. You don't have to do hardly anything. Now, when you do consider that the future probably V8 engines are gonna go extinct. So this 
is the luxury sports car of both the present and the future will probably phase out V8 engines. Lexus is talking about phasing V8 engines. You never know what's actually going to happen in the future. But you can see it's got plenty of power. People will want to know it's not fast enough. It's not stiff enough. What? That's not what it's for. There are plenty of cars out that are faster than this thing. But when you compare the speed, the maneuverability, the silky smooth ride, and the looks, if you're in that rarefied atmosphere that you think nothing of buying sports luxury car for a hundred grand. But if you've watched me in the past and knowing what I say about these open mouth grills, I have a custom made one. I don't like these big mouths. Everybody's used them. I just don't like them. I don't like the style of it. Put a different facade on it. So now you know the truth about it. sports luxury vehicles if you've got a hundred grand lying around you really couldn't do much better than buying this lexus here so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell